In this video, I'm going to work out the exact value for the sine of 9 degrees, and I'm going to go ahead and do it two different ways. Alright, so some of the trig ratios that we're going to use in this video, I have already worked out in previous videos, and so I have linked to those videos down in the video description, so be sure to check those out if you would like to see where some of these values came from, like the sine of 36 and the sine of 54 or the sine of 72 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do it two ways. Uh, one way we're going to use the difference equation here for sine, and the other way we're going to use the half angle identity for sine. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this difference formula first. So we're saying the sine of a minus b, and so we need uh, a and B such that uh, they subtract and make my 9 degrees, but they need to be angles that I know the sine and cosine for. So let's go ahead and make this the sine of 45 degrees minus 36 degrees. All right, and we can expand that. So it's going to be the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 36 degrees. And from that, we're going to subtract the sine of 36 times the cosine of 45. Well, all right. Okay, so I'll put my equal sign over here for this. Well, the sine of 45, eh, that's not too bad. That's the square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 36, well, the cosine of 36 is also the same as the sine of 54 degrees. And the sine of 54 degrees we worked out in a previous video. And so that value is the square root of 5 plus 1 all over 4. Okay? And from that we'll subtract the sine of 36 degrees. Again, we worked this out in a previous video as well. Okay? And then times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 over 2. So basically, it's just a matter of kind of simplifying this as much as we can, and we're all done. So maybe that seemed a little too easy. But once again, finding the sine of 54 and the sine of 36 uh, weren't as easy, but uh, you can check those videos out, like I said. Okay, so the denominator here looks like 8, and also the denominator here looks like 8. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull a 1 8th out of both of those. And so what I'm left with here, when I distribute that through, it looks like the square root of 10 plus the square root of 2 minus, and here it looks like 2 times 2 here, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 makes 2, and then it looks like this radical uh, just kind of comes along for the ride. So we could write it this way, and this is one way to write this. Uh, there's other ways to write this if you want to keep these a little more separate, kind of like they are right here. Uh, you could factor out a square root of 2 here. You could say the square root of 2 over 8, and then multiply that by the square root of 5 plus 1. And then minus, and this 1 eighth times 2 is 1 fourth times that uh, radical expression there. Anyway, so here is 1 expression that uh, is for the sine of 9 degrees. And like I always do, let's go ahead and grab a calculator and we will check to verify that that works. So let me push this up a little bit and get our calculator out here. So we're going to say the inverse sine. So inverse sine of, and we got a lot of stuff in here, so we'll go slow here. Okay, the square root of 2 over 8. So we're going to say the square root of 2 and we're going to divide that by 8. And then we're going to multiply that by the square root of 5 plus 1. Okay, and from that we're going to subtract uh, 1 fourth times the square root of 5 minus, and inside there is another square root of 5. Okay, equals, hey, right there, it is 9 degrees. So we know that this one works as the sine of 9 degrees, and that's not too bad of an expression. So for our second method of determining the exact value for the sine of 9 degrees, let's go ahead and use a half angle identity. So this will end up being the sine of, and we'll have 18 degrees divided by 2, because half of 18 is our 9 degrees. 
Okay, and we'll put this into our formula. So under the radical, we have this expression, and it's going to be the cosine of that 18 degrees, and we're going to divide that by 2. And again, all of that is underneath that square root. Um, just because of the way I have done the order of these videos, I'm going to change this instead of 1 minus the cosine of 18, I'm going to do 1 minus the sine of 72. They're the exact same values because 18 and 72 are complementary angles, but I've already made the video showing the exact value for the sine of 72 degrees, and again that link is in the video description, so you can check that out, so I'm not going to rework uh, the entire thing, we're just going to go ahead and slip that value right into this radical. So it's 1 minus, and this sine of 72 degrees is going to be the square root of 2 over 4 times the square root of, and then we have this uh, 5 plus the square root of 5 underneath that radical, and all of that then is over 2. Okay, so right here you see the sine of 72. Well, it looks like we have 1 minus, and we have this denominator of 4. So let's go ahead and multiply this 1 by 4 over 4, and then those denominators of 4s can drop down with this 2 and become 8. So let's do that. So 4 minus the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 plus radical 5, and all of that then is over 8. Okay, so one thing we can do, let's go ahead and multiply by 2 over 2 inside this radical. That way my denominator can be a perfect square, and I can go ahead and take that out. So 8 times 2 will be 16, and 16 is a perfect square, so we'll take it out and it'll become 1 fourth outside of that radical. So again, inside the radical, this 2 will be distributed here and here. So I'll have 8 minus... And then we have 2 radical 2 times the square root of 5 plus radical 5. Okay, well, we kind of have a radical inside of a radical inside of a radical. We can clean this up a little bit, but there's only so much we can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the square root of 2 and push him through this radical. And then let's factor out a square root of 2 and take that out. So it'll look like this, square root of 2 over 4. And inside this radical now, I'll have 4 minus the square root of, and when I put this 2 through, it'll be 10 plus 2 times the square root of 5. And again, this is another version for the sine of 9 degrees. And again, just uh, for good measure, let's go ahead and grab the calculator, and I'll show you that this works as well. Okay. So we're going to do inverse sine, so inverse sine 4, and we have the square root of 2 divided by 4, and that's the beginning of that, and then we have times the square root of 4 minus the square root of 10 plus 2 times the square root of 5. So get way out of all that stuff, and yeah, 9 degrees. Okay, so it worked again. So if you stick around here, so I have given you two different expressions. So the other one, let me go ahead and write down so we can see them next to each other. The other one was this. We had the square root of 2 over 8 times radical 5 plus 1, and then we subtracted 1 fourth times the square root of 5 minus radical 5. So both of these expressions are the same thing. They both are for the sine of 9 degrees. But they definitely don't look like the same thing. So you could be done with the video now. I've shown you two different ways to do the sine of 9 degrees. But if you stick around for another couple minutes, let me go ahead and show you that these two things uh, are the same, and I'll work it out algebraically. So I have these two expressions here written side by side, and they are set equal to one another because I know they're the same because they both represent the sine of 9 degrees. And so I'm going to go through a process here, uh, and it's very similar to when you're verifying trigonometric identities. I have two sides of an equation that are identical, so I'm going to take one side and manipulate it and transform it into the other side. So I'm going to take this left side, and I'm going to go through a series of uh, manipulations, and I'm going to transform it into this right side so we can see that they are indeed the same. 
So the first thing I notice is that this right side has this constant, this square root of 2 over 4 out front, and everything else is under a radical. So I'm going to go ahead and start by factoring a square root of 2 over 4 out of this right side. So when I do that, I'll be left with uh, 1 half here times this square root of 5 plus 1 minus, and let's see, when I divide this 1 fourth by the square root of 2 over 4, I'll be left with the square root of 2 over 2 uh, times that radical expression here. And so that's equal. Okay, so that's the first step. Uh, the next thing, and I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit here. There's something I'd like to do to make uh, our future steps a little easier. I'm going to go ahead and make this a single fraction. So the square root of 5 plus 1 over 2 minus. And this is a square root, and this whole thing is a square root. So when I'm multiplying square roots, I can just put these under a single square root together. So the 2, I'll distribute to the 5 here and then outside of this radical. So I'll have the square root of 10 minus 2 radical 5 all over 2. Okay, and that's just a little quick cleanup because it'll make this next step a lot easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I noticed that up here, everything else is under a radical, right? So what I'm going to do is take all of this and put it under a radical. Well, I can't just willy-nilly do that, so I have a little... Uh, property up here. I have a equals, and I can go ahead and put a under radical as long as I square it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this entire expression and square it and put it under a radical. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to say this uh, square root of 5 plus 1 over 2 minus that big square root expression over 2 and I'm going to multiply it by itself, so or squaring it. And of course, all of that then is going to be under that radical. Okay, so now I'd say probably this is the hard part. We just need to go through and multiply all this together. So it looks like we have the square of a binomial here. So we have this minus this, and then it's the same thing. So let's go ahead and multiply these firsts together. So the square root of 5 plus 1 times the square root of 5 plus 1 is going to be 6 plus 2 radical 5, and then over 2 times 2 is over 4. And it looks like the outside, so these two multiplied, and then the insides multiplied are the same things, and they're going to be minus. So I'm going to say minus 2, because we've got two of them. And then, uh, basically, I'm just going to put these together. So we have the square root of 5 plus 1 multiplied by this square root expression all over, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And then we have the negative and a negative, so positive, and then we multiply these last together. And it looks like when we multiply a radical times this radical, the square root just cancels out, and I'm left with this over that 2 times 2 which is 4. And all of that is under the radical, and that equals. Okay, so I know this uh, looks pretty long here. We're going to go ahead and condense it down pretty quickly, though. Okay, so let's look at this. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. And this 2 radical 5 over 4 is plus radical 5 over 2. And let's go ahead and take a look at these, because five. Let's see, 10 over 4 becomes 5 over 2. And then the negative 2 radical 5 over 4 becomes minus the square root of 5 over 2. So you'll notice the, uh, the positive uh, radical 5 over 2 and the negative radical 5 over 2 cancel. That's really nice. And here the 2 and the 4, it looks like that 2 will cancel to a 1 and this 4 will cancel to a 2. And so I'm going to have minus and then this radical 5 plus 1 with that square root expression all over 2. And of course all of this is under that radical. Okay, well this is coming along quite nicely. 3 halves and 5 halves will make 8 halves, which is 4. So here's our 4 right here. Okay, so under that radical is 4 and it's minus, so 4 minus. So the only thing we can are concerned with at this point is making sure 
that this, okay, ends up looking like this right here, this radical expression inside, okay? So I'm going to do that trick again because I notice that all of it needs to be under this radical, but this is not. So I'm going to go ahead and square this and put it inside the radical with that guy that's already there. So here's a square root. It is now the square root of 5 plus 1. I'm going to square that and put that along with the 10 minus 2 radical 5 that's already there. And of course, that is over that 2. Okay? So 4 minus. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that 2 under this radical as well. And I can do that by making it a 4. And so when I square this, I have 6 plus 2 radical 5 times that 10 minus 2 radical 5. All that's under the radical. And all of that is under that big square root. Okay? Just about there. So 4 minus. And we have the square root here. So 6 times 10 is 60. And then we have minus 12 radical 5 plus 20 radical 5. And then 2 times 2 times 5 is minus 20. And all of that is over 4. And all of that is under that radical still. So the square root of 2 over 4 times the square root of 4 minus. So 60 minus 20 is 40. And 40 divided by 4 is 10. Uh, negative 12 radical 5 plus 20 radical 5 is 8 radical 5 divided by 4 is positive 2 radical 5. So we now have the square root of 2 over 4 times the square root of 4 minus the square root of 10 plus 2 radical 5. And you'll see that that's exactly the right side that we were going for. So we have effectively shown that those two expressions are equal to one another. And we knew that already, but uh, we kind of saw it numerically with a series of manipulations. And so both of those are the sign of nine degrees.